Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Welcome again this morning to another session of the Potter's Gate online broadcast. My name is Isaac Phillips, as you know, at King Tola. Uh, well, this morning, once again, we're going to continue to pray and track the heart of the Father. So many things the Spirit of the Lord is exposing and revealing to us in this brand new day. And it's our duty and responsibility to connect, if you will, to track the mind of the Lord. And so we're going to continue this morning. Yesterday, we stopped at a very... Um, high notes, looking at, you know, David. David has become, uh, um, if you will, a pattern of technology for us as we navigate the, 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 the realities of our day, the challenges, the complex, you know, uh, realities of our day. Thank you so much, my brother, for joining this morning. It's nice to have you. Uh, I guess this is your first time of connecting with us online. Thank you so much. It's an honor to, 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 you know, to find you, to have you here this morning. We're going to uh, just wait for a few more people before we uh, dive into that which the Spirit of the Lord is emphasizing. All right. There's so much the Spirit of the Lord is unpacking that we need to have what I call a multidimensional uh, 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 receptor. We need to have a multidimensional receptor. We need to have the capacity to be able to hear, all right, you know, the multitude, the, the, the Bible talk about the, the voice of God, you know, as a, as, as, you know, as an, as a multitude, as an ocean. We need to be able to hear that speakings, that, you know, proclamations. When the father speaks, he speaks in multidimensional way. <clears throat> Excuse me. When the Lord speaks, he speaks in a multidimensional way. It's for us to be able to know how to fit what he's saying all right to every aspect of our life and every given situation in other words we've got to develop the spiritual you know uh, uh, you know capacity we've got to develop that spiritual you know technocrat capacity in other words we we, we are able to intelligently interpret the mind of the lord because it's in the lack of having a clear understanding and the lack of having a precise, you know, a, a view of what the Lord is saying, that we get defeated. The enemy always preys on our ignorance. So we're going to pray before I go into the message this morning. I'm going to pray this morning. Father, we thank you for your spirit once again. Thank you. It's an honor to be part of your company in the earth. It's an honor to be part of your voice in the earth. It's an honor to be part of the church, the ecclesia that you are growing, that you're developing, that you are maturing to speak into, yes, the realities of the complexities of the day, the things that eyes are finding difficult to understand, to comprehend, the things that ears are finding difficult, yes, to interpret, the things that hearts cannot conceive, even though they hear these things, but they can't conceive them. And so we thank you, Lord, that You've got a people on the earth, O oh God, who have not bowed the knees, who have not been captured. A people in the earth, O oh God, who have continued to track with you, to journey with you, to the place where indeed their heart desire is to always represent your intentions in the earth. We thank you this morning for such a people, and we are that company of a people. And so we thank you. We honor you, precious Holy Spirit, that you will continue to minister to us. This morning, as I woke up, you spoke to me that you need to develop a constancy of focus in the spirit. You need to develop a constancy of focus in the spirit. The things of the spirit is, 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 is so easy for us to slide away, to, to be flushed away, to be dragged away, to be led astray, to be, to be, to be diverted. It's so easy. Just one little adjustment can disfigure a whole configuration in the spirit. And so, Father, as we hear and listen and adjust ourselves regularly, a continual thing that we must do. You said every day they must gather to speak to themselves. As they see the day of the Lord drawing nearer, they must always gather, come together. And the, the fellowship that we are building in this new day is one with clear objective oh god we're not just gathering to make noise no as we see your day draw near as we see darkness cover the earth oh god as we look into you and we see 
greater light, Father. We cannot but to come together and share of this life, O oh God, of this truth, of this grace that you have given unto us. So we thank you, O oh God, that as we join together, Lord, across the globe, across the nations, Father, that our heart will be saying yes to that which you are proclaiming and declaring in this brand new day. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will continue to minister to us, that you will continue to speak to us, that you will continue to grant us the capacity to journey further, not to be weary, not to be tired, not to be distracted, yes, not to lose sight so that we don't get sunk into that which, yes, the enemy is doing. We don't get, yes, pulled down and 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 and, and drown, oh God, in the waters of, 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 of life, Father. We want to be able to maintain, yes, a, pos a position, a posture of subduing the challenges of our day. As you said to Peter, come out, come to me. And as he stepped out of that boat, Father, yes, with that, with the voice of that new identity, Lord, submerge and subdue him. Yes, the very thing that you subdue. You said, as you are, so we are. And so I thank you this morning, Father, that we are stepping out of the old identity. We are stepping into a new day. A new day that is requiring a new identity. We thank you, Father, this morning that as your spirit continue to wear us new gear, new capacity, new ability, as we continue to develop, yes, a new sense of the mind of Christ. You say, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Ha -ha. Father, we thank you that as you continue to speak, Speak to us and minister to us about the upgrading of our position in the earth as we see and track this order in the life of David. Father, we thank you this morning. Ha, yesterday you began to speak to us about the, the life, the identity of, of David. And, and, and as we look into the scripture, we begin to see that that identity was connected because Saul wanted to find out who is this young man? Who is this guy who have the capacity, who has the audacity to go face a giant. Who is he? Whose son is he? Whose son is he? Whose son is he? And that's what we're going to be looking this morning. First of all, he asked, who is this man? The next thing he asks, who is his father? So we want to track this thing. We want to find our place. We want to find our voice. We want to find our location in the earth, oh God. We want to be able to precisely represent your divine intention that in this new day, there will not be a, mis a misplaced identity, a misrepresentation. No, Father, everyone whom you have called, who have walked this earth, they, they walk this earth in the authority of knowing who they are in you and knowing who you are in them so father we thank you this morning that as you continue to speak to us in this brand new day this is a brand new day yes situations may be die hard circumstances may be challenging things may be falling apart darkness may be covering the earth you said it's our own day to arise and shine <laughs> you said it's our day it may be a day of darkness in the world system it may be a day of darkness lord in the economy it may be a day of darkness among yes the hidden but in the day of your children in the day of your kingdom is a day to arise and shine you say arise and shine for your light has come it's not going to come. It has come. What we need to do, Lord, is to open our eyes. What, what we need to do, Lord, is to arise into that which you have already done. You said you have already made a way for us in the desert. You've already made a way for us in the barren land, in the barren heights. And so we thank you this morning that we receive new sight to relocate our position. To, redefi to redefine, to redesign, to reset our location. Father, we have been using, oh God, an obsolete GPS that needs to be calibrated. And so this morning we have come, Lord, to be calibrated. We have come to be calibrated. Just like a phone, an, a, 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 an iPad, uh, you know, all this technology can be calibrated. Yes, they can be upgraded. They can be updated. We have come by the Spirit, via the Spirit, to be calibrated, to be updated dated to be upgraded so that we can function in the new reality of your speakings 
There are that, there are that which your spirit is proclaiming and declaring. There are emphases in the spirit right now that you are showing, revealing, yes, that you want earth to walk in. There are things that you are pro talking about. There are things that needs to be understood in the spirit, yes, that will make for answer, yes, in the days that we live in. Yes, Father, we have come to receive what is called the keys of David. Father, we thank you. We have come to receive the keys of David. The keys of David are dimensions, are realities. They are revelations. They are insight, illuminations. Yes, they are templates that we can operate with on earth here yeah, and bring answer and bring solution and bring correction and bring realignment to the issues that are buffeting society. We thank you Lord. We rise up this morning as sons of David. You said yes, this is a day where you are restoring back the tabernacle of David. And so Father we proclaim that we are the tabernacle that you are restoring. We are the tabernacle that is rising from his broken ashes, from his broken bricks and walls and gate. We are yes that tabernacle. We are the tabernacle among men. We are the temple of God among me. Father, thank you this morning. He said, do, do you not know that you are the temple of God? We are your temple. We are the place where you want to manifest, express your glory and power in this brand new day. So, Father, we thank you. We receive the adjustment, oh God, of our sight. We receive adjustment, oh God, of our position in the spirit. We receive divine adjustment so that we can see with clarity. We don't want to see men walking like trees. We want to see with accuracy. We want to see with understanding. We want to see with prophetic accuracy. This is that that was prophesied by Prophet Joel. I thank you, Spirit of the Lord, that as you continue to unveil your heart and mind to us, we will be obedient. We will be obedient. We will not walk in rebellion. We will be obedient. We will track you. We will walk with you. We will submit to, to you, God, as Isaac submit, O oh God, to Abraham, his father. We find a technology in Isaac, O oh God, even as we look at David. Father, everyone are speaking to themselves. The whole prophetic counsel, yes, of heaven, are all speaking to themselves. We all we need to come into the alignment of the rest of the restoration, yes, of 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 of, of the iconic men of 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 of, of our prophetic patriarch that have gone ahead. Isaac, we find in, in Noah, we find in, in Methuselah, we find oh God a dimension. In, in in Enos, we find in Enoch, we find oh God a dimension, oh God. We thank Thank you this day that as we continue to track oh God, the restoration of this temple that we will find in Moses a dimension oh God yes to bring people out oh God out of darkness out of bondage in the name of Jesus out of slavery Lord in the name of Jesus we thank you we will continue to proceed further that in Joseph we find oh God a capacity oh God that we rule in the midst oh God yes of our enemy we thank you spirit of the Lord that you will continue to bring us oh God that in Esther our mother we find capacity oh God to stand before the king and to represent a whole nation in the name of Jesus with that which you have called us the beautify society we are the beauty of the Lord expressing the glory of God in this new day oh God that as you as you are Abandon, yes, the position of, 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 of the old, oh God, Mandala Boshyamdo, and you begin to speak to us, yes, as you live Vashti, and you begin to look for one that will represent you in this brand new day, in the court of the king. Father, we proclaim that we present ourselves, and we yield ourselves, oh God, to the ministry of Mordecai, in the name of Jesus, that will position us as a father, that will build us that would train us indeed that the, the position of a father is one yes who births but also train yeah. Paul said for you are my children for whom I travel again in birth until Christ be formed in you that is a position of a father because Saul is asking who is the father of this boy? Father, we thank you this day that we locate our fatherhood in you. And we love the way you father us. That you will continue to war with us. You will continue to war with us. You will continue to correct us. You will continue to rebuke us. We will not shy away. We will not turn away, oh God, from your correction, oh Father. We will listen to your voice. We will listen. We will obey. In the name of Jesus, we will, we will allow you to inscribe, yes, your word upon our tongue, oh God. We will allow you to 
to inscribe your law upon our heart, Lord. We will, re we, will re we will reflect you. We will represent you. We will not misrepresent you, no. We will not defame you in this new day. No, no. Father, Lord, we declare that we come under your authority. We come under your government. We come under your leadership. So continue to build us. Continue to equip us. Continue through the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Continue to show us, oh God, the way. For Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He is the pattern son. He is the one that have come to show us the way of God. He has come to show us the way of God, the way of truth. Just like you brought them to Mount Sinai, the first mountain of divine information, of divine instruction. Father, once again, we remind ourselves, we come to the place of rehazard. We remind ourselves, we've come to a place of reorientation of what you spoke, oh God, to our Father on Mount Sinai. Lord, we declare this morning, oh God, that we are carriers of your law. Your laws are not, are not, are not, are not designed to, to keep us in bondage. They are designed to set us free. Yes, Father. You said, any man who loves you will love your law. Father, we thank you this morning that we love your law. Your laws are your principle. Your laws are your doctrine. Your laws are your ways. Your laws are your truth. Your laws are your values. So we embrace the law this morning. Not a tradition. We embrace your law. Your law will build us up and prepare us in this new day. We track something in Isaac that we found also in David. They were obedient. They were obedient servants. Isaac was willing to carry the wood. Yet he had the voice. In our father's house, we have a voice. But our voice is expressed in obedience. No, Father, not the kind of fathers we see out there that the sons don't have a voice in the house. Isaac, friends, Isaac had a voice in the house of his father. His voice was not shut. So was David. David said, Father, we've got the wood, we've got the fire. Where is the lamb? And the father will respond in wisdom. The Lord will provide. We track something in there that begins to paint to us a picture of a relationship between a father and a son. The whole idea of the ministry of fatherhood has been perverted in the body of Christ. Has been destroyed to the point today we've got to extreme we've got to extreme now where every time we find ourselves in a position of too extreme you know that what is going to manifest is error hallelujah we're tracking something by the spirit friends prayer is important but praying accurately is more important Prayer is important, but pray more accurately. Apollos knew the way of the Lord. He knew the baptism of John. But Priscilla and Aquila showed him the, more, the way of the Lord more perfect. More perfect. This is the day we are coming into perfection of truth. Because it is the perfection of truth that perfects our manhood, that perfects our position in the earth, that gives us a balanced sight. <clears throat> all through the age, what we have seen, all right, are extremes, extremes of truth. And when we run in extremes of truth, we run into error. So while people are saying, well, they do not believe in the ministry of a father. And then you have the other side that are saying, no, if you don't, if you don't have a father over your life, you are you are you are you are an orphan. They talk about the orphan spirit. So you see these two extreme, these two extreme that has create war on 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 ending war in the church. Who will give us a balance? You see, it always takes the voice of a true prophet, a mature prophet, not just any kind of prophet, a mature prophet. I'm doing a write up right now. 
on the difference between a young prophet and a mature prophet. I'm just trying to see, yeah, if I can track this material on my on my laptop. Yeah. Comparing the position of a young prophet and a mature prophet, and I've actually stopped on point nine so far. I'm still going. <clears throat> because it's a day that we, the, the nature of the day that we live in demands that somebody help us to make sense. Or else, the things that people are seeing within the church will always reflect chaos to people that are watching us. And that's basically the condition of the church today. When people look to us, when people watch us, when people look at what is going on in the church, all they see is chaos. All they hear is confusion. But within that confusion, confusion all right, there's a speaking of God. It's just that it's been misrepresented. And it's been misrepresented because people have not waited. They have not, they have not developed the spirit of communion and community. Just like we saw in the book of Acts. Where everybody have come to understand the oneness of the body. That when we speak, we speak from that position of truth and oneness. So when, when, when the people hear us, they say, ah, these people are drunk. Is that not what you're saying today about the church? These people must be drunk. I mean, it's just the ninth hour. They're already drunk. Why? Because no one is able to give clarity and, and understanding and interpretation to the people and say, hey, wait a minute. These people are not drunk. This is the night hour. What you're seeing happening is a release of the spirit, is the baptism of the spirit. Something is happening among the people of God, all right, that you guys don't know about, that you've got that you guys have never seen, all right. But we need to bring you to understanding. We need to bring you to clarity. We need to bring amen, you know, an interpretation to that which you're seeing so that you can make sense. You see, that's why we have people who are assigned with the grace to teach. To rightly divide the word of God. Yesterday we were tracking a scripture. In Hebrews chapter 4 verse, verse uh, 12. It said the word of God is sharper than two edges sword. It cuts asunder the soul and the spirit. Yes, that's the day we live in. We are separating, amen, the soulish order, amen, from the spiritual order. We are separating that which is just noise from the sound. We have to do that or else... We will run into the same challenge that people ran into in the past. So I'm a voice that is bringing balance and clarity regarding the things of God, regarding the word of God, regarding amen, prayer. That's why if you have not read my book, my material on redefining prayer, I think you should do that. Just go to my site. That book took me about 13, you know, 13 years to put together. It's a free download, so you don't need to pay for it, except you want to bless me. <laughs> it's a free download. Well, I'll, I'll appreciate the blessing. We need, we need, we need people that to resource us to continue what we're doing. But we don't sell our material. All free download. If you go to my site, Amen, PortersGate.org.org. All right. You go to uh, uh, eBooks and uh, PDF. All right. You just scroll down. You will find a material there. All right. Uh, redefining the ministry of prayer. And, and you, will, I mean, it's going to be a blessing to your spirit. It's going to really bless you. <clears throat> In there, we brought a lot of clarity and understanding because you see, prayer is important to what we do, all right. And everybody pray, but not everybody pray right. We pray amiss, and because we pray amiss, we don't hear, we don't receive from God, all right. The Lord says you 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 you're desiring, but you're not asking, all right. You're praying, but you're praying amiss. So so we've got to understand all this. You see, we're in a day of redefinition. There's a need for us to redefine so many things. And one of the things the Spirit of the Lord, amen, is emphasizing in this new day as we connect that in the context, amen, of prayer. Because whatever we birth in prayer, in the spirit of truth and in prayer, all right, becomes authentic and becomes uh, uh, real. It, it, you know, it, it, it advances the things of God. Whatever we birth, amen, that is not birth in the spirit of God, in the spirit of truth, is Ishmael. We don't want to give birth to Ishmael. We want to continue to bring forth Isaac. And we're tracking in Isaac as we're looking at David, who is our pattern in this new day. All right? 
principles that will allow us, values that will enable us to advance, to rise up, amen, and take full delivery of that which the Spirit of the Lord is requiring of us in this new day. For every season, there is a key that is required, amen, to, 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 to unlock that, that realm, all right? Every season, amen, is, is defined by a portal. Is defined by a portal, and you need one who has the grace, who, who has been called into the ministry of a portal, amen, to open, amen, the, 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 the gate and allow people to flow into, amen, the speakings of God, the activities of God, because the activities of God defines, amen, the operations of men in the earth. If we don't understand the activities of God, all right, and we just want to operate in the earth, we will be submerged by the powers. You must, you must understand that there are forces, there are powers, all right, there are systems in high places. The Bible talks about principalities. Principalities are not just little demons running here and there. These are these are powerful, you know, satanic, you know, uh, 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 you know, value system that have been established over realms. So, the principality walk through system. They walk through system. They walk through family. They walk through government. They walk through, you know, business. All right. And that's why we need to understand. I've, I've just finished a material that we're going to be looking into. All right. Dealing with uh, 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 the spirit of, you know, Jezebel. Jezebel has become a system in our day. Not just a woman. All right. She's a woman, but she's a system. All right. That operates in, in the place of influence and position and power. And Jezebel, all right, as the Lord began to show me, she's actually a principality. You know, because when you track Jezebel in the Old Testament and you continue to read scripture, the next time you're going to see Jezebel is in the book of Revelation. So whatever demon, whatever spirit, up, you know, shows up in the book of Revelation is a principality. And that, and that means that the church must rise up with the right capacity to engage that thing or else we will fight that spirit, amen, ignorantly, on, on, you know, as humanly, and then we get defeated. So we cannot afford to make mistakes in the in the days that we're living. These are powerful days of 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 kingdom warfare, all right. And we have to understand our war gear. We need to understand who we are, all right. Well, that's why we're looking at David. David understood who 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 he is, and that's why he could engage. That's why he could engage. That's why he could engage. He understood who he is. He understood his position. He understood the authority of God in his life. He understood, amen, not just the authority of God, but he understood the position of a father. Like I, sh I was sharing yesterday, he walked in obedience. And so as we continue to look at all this, which I'm going to do in the next few minutes, or I actually said I was going to compare, look at uh, the position of a young prophet and, and a mature prophet. Okay, maybe I should quickly give you three. And then I'll come back to you know, David, because I think it's important, you know, uh, the, 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 heaven is, the Bible says, you know, uh, there'll be famine in the last day, famine of the word. There'll be famine, there'll be famine. But if you know how to track God, if you know how to walk with God, all right, the father in the midst of famine will always lead you to a place called the brook. And it will, it will always bring a supply, amen, to you there. Yes, people who wanted to hear the word of God, even in the day where, you know, the demonic system of, of you know, of, of, of the Roman Empire was in charge. People were tracking God by journeying to where? To the wilderness to hear the voice of a crazy prophet called John the Baptist. <laughs> You understand? If you really want to hear the voice of God, you can hear the voice of God. You just need to pray to God. Open my eyes. Open my ears. Lead me. All right? If you scan through, amen, the airwave, if you scan through the cyber wave, come on, you will find a guy by the name Isaiah Phillips at Kintala Potter's Gate. He speaks from the throne of God. And there are many like him. So God is speaking to us. So don't say that, uh, well, I don't know. No, no. If you are, if you are genuine, if you're, if your heart, if, there are people who just want to hear something that they can run with. You know, they want to hear something. They, they're not ready to change. They're not ready for that word to change them. They just want to pick a word and run with it and run with the, you know, with, you know, with the noisemakers and run with. Oh, I also, I've got a message. Remember, there was a guy who ran to David. I've got a message. I've got a message. Your, your enemy is death. Your enemy is dead. <laughs> David said, you are not even afraid to bring such a message. And he, he and even had the audacity to say, I'm the one that killed him. David said, guy, take this guy away and show him what we do to people with, with such attitude. They killed him. He was killed. So be, be careful how you run with something they call the apostolic in this, in this new day. 
All right. Don't 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 be a parrot. Don't be a bird carrying seed from one position to another. And the seed has no capacity amen, to, to, to form Christ in you. Because that's what we see. A lot of people are just carrying, they carry this seed and run to that seed and dump it there. All right. And all they're doing, you see them exercising, you know, uh, uh, strength and they, 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 there is, there is activity, but the activity is not, is not transforming to, you know, to, 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 to reforming their life, to changing their life. The, the seed they're carrying, amen, is, is just a seed to, to, to show others that, well, I'm also relevant. After all, I'm saying something that's Sound apostolic. I'm saying something that sound prophetic. I'm saying something that sound like you know what God is doing, but that thing has not been formed in them. They have no capacity, all right, to produce the fruit of the seed they claim they are carrying. There are churches like that. You think, oh, they're one of us. They can also say, <clears throat> excuse me, they can also say shibboleth. All right, <laughs> the fact that you can say shibboleth does not mean that you're from the tribe. So people have perfected the act of saying the thing. People have, have, have perfected the act all right, of acting, of acting Christiany, of acting apostolic, of acting reformation. They, they, they're just actors. They're actors. But they're not really engaging in the realities of life. Come on. They're not engaging in the demand of the new day. They are not being changed. And listen to this. Only, only those who have truly been changed at the backside of the wilderness who have submit themselves to the ministry of, of, of obedience because obedience will always but in fact humility is what but obedience not the other way around when, when you're humble when you're humble Bible says humble yourself under the mighty hand of God the mighty hand of God amen is the position of government the mighty hand of God is a position of government when the mighty hand of God comes upon you amen you don't run around hallelujah giving prophecy no no you submit, amen, to his divine instruction. You submit to the reformation. What reforms you is the doctrine of Christ until Christ be formed in you. You will remain under the tutors. Yes, they will send tutors into your life. Paul said, you have, you have many. You, you may have 10,000 instructors, but you have not many fathers. Instructors are good. We need them. But a father is one who birth you by the spirit. We need instructors because they help us to develop, amen, our prophetic apostolic, you know, opposition. These are institutions. There are spiritual institutions we need to engage in. We need to uh, enroll in, all right? There are people who have been instructed. They are teachers. They are instructors. They are administrators. They tell you, sit down. They give you instruction. All right? You want to be the best runner. All right? Okay? You want to be the best fighter. All right? They, 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 they enroll you in the schools. <laughs> you, and they enroll you in the school. You, you learn how to fight. You learn how to run. Amen? Whatever it is, they, they teach you how to maintain discipline. Many people today, all right, are just claiming, all right, they've got fathers, but they don't have instructors in their lives. So let's balance truth. Remember what I said earlier on? We live in a day of two extreme truths. We've got to understand the position of instructors and fathers. All right? I believe in the ministry of fathers, but not in the concept, not in the context of how fatherhood is being presented today in the church. I don't believe in that. That is witchcraft. If, if fatherhood is to manipulate people, is to control people, all right, is to take advantage of people, is to shut the voice and shut the potential of people, all right, in the church. If that is the meaning of fatherhood, I don't believe in it because that is not Christ. That is not Christ. If fatherhood is all about collecting the money, all right, is all about bringing the money to the apostles' feet, and the lifestyle of the man of God, the bishop, the apostle, the, 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 the pastor, is not reflecting all right you know humility and submission to the body all right and and and, and he cannot bring himself amen under the scrutiny of the people I, 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 paul said my life my my life preach the gospel to you he said he said follow me as i follow christ so we we see something in the scripture that shows us how a father should should carry himself should identify himself should represent himself not just before the sons not just before the people amen but before heaven a father is one that has a standing before heaven. All right, he himself is under the government of the father. 
All right. He's an under shepherd. He's he, the, the, every father must be under the leadership, under the under the authority of Christ, because it's from there that he can he can lead the people. It's from there, he, Amen. He can guide the people. It's from there, Amen. He can he can instruct the people as a father. We've got to understand this, because if we don't understand this, we will in the name of trying to look for covering. In the name of looking for covering, we will submit ourselves to the wrong people that will actually, in fact, destroy our destiny. Don't you understand that who you submit to, who you submit yourself to, has the authority and the capacity, amen, to destroy your life because they speak into your life. And if they say the right thing with the wrong motive, you can be assured that you're going nowhere. If they say the right thing with the wrong motive, you see, what you say really is not what matters, but the heart to which you say it. It is the heart to which you say what you say that matters. It is the motive. It is the it is you see it is it is the river, all right, that 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 that, that flows the water. It is the well that produces the water that matters. There are polluted waters, there are polluted streams, there are polluted streams, there are polluted rivers. <clears throat> you understand this? When David was commanded to go fight Goliath, they send him to the stream. They send him to the stream. That was where he came from. He was the stones that was picked out. David was the stone that was picked out of the stream to kill Goliath. You see, we've got to understand, we're tracking by the Spirit. Because the day we live in demands that we have what I call precise, accurate identity. Are you with me, friends? got to understand these things because if we don't understand it i told you the enemy will always take advantage of us in the place of ignorance the enemy will always take advantage of us in the place of extremes the enemy will always take advantage of us in the place of insecurity so we there, there should not be a place all right in this in this day that we live in that we call a no-go area. No, we want to uncover every aspect of our life before God. We want God to touch, to point at every aspect of our being. We want correction in every area of our life, in our finance, in our home, marriage, relationship, our singleness, or our business, you know, our position in society as government, as, as state men, or as politicians. Whatever we're doing, we want the vo voice of God there. We want the opinion of God there. God, tell us what you're saying all right, about every area of life. About our sexuality. God, speak to us. Because it's from there. We do, listen, friends. We don't take our opinion. We don't take our idea. We don't take amen, our concept of truth or philosophy from the world's opinion. No. If the word of God cannot speak to us regarding the conditions of life, then we, 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 we've missed it. we failed. Paul says then, <laughs> we should, everybody should just go play, you know, and tomorrow we die. Come on, when we fight beasts in Ephesus, it's important that we understand the position to where to which we're fighting those beasts from. You see, David knew his position before he fought the beast. You see, you don't go fight beasts if you don't know who you are. All right, you don't go fight Atalea, you don't go fight, you know, some Jezebel if you don't know your, your authority, if you don't know where you're coming from. Come on, you dare not go to fight, you know, uh, uh, what, what, what was her name now? You know, Delilah. Ah, you'll be gone. You'll be, you'll be finished. <laughs> you, you go ask something. <laughs> Are you tracking with me? Are you tracking with me? Because I needed to understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in this new day. You know, as I woke up this morning, a word, you know, not a word, a thought came to my spirit. It's important that we understand why heaven is speaking to us like this. Why heaven is bringing us to this position. We, it's important because if we don't, we will trivialize the, we will trivialize the word. Okay, this is just another preaching. This is not just another preaching. I'm not preaching to you. I'm giving you a clear, you know, insight and instruction regarding how to track the nature of the days we live in. All right? Because we can look into the word of God and find people who have tracked, who have journeyed this path. All right? When we look at Enoch, when we look at Isaac, when we look at, you know, uh, uh, Abraham, when we look at Moses, amen, when we look at, you know, uh, 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 Noah, we, we find people pattern of how to live life but you see yes we read those things but we do not have people that will give us clear interpretation 
of the nature of the days we live in based on the relevancy of truth that we're reading we're reading we're reading but we don't know what we're reading that's the Ethiopian Enoch he was reading he, he listen the man was not a dunce he was he was intelligent but our intelligence cannot bring accuracy of biblical truth of biblical prophecy we've got to have somebody that have been baptized that have been mature we've got to have some elder we've got to have some man we've got to have some woman whom heaven has baptized who have gone through the journey who have been built who have been trained who have been positioned at the gate as a father as an elder who can speak to our life who can give us clarity who can give us direction who can say this is what that means don't do that this is what you need to do then you can then decide to make a choice I will never live my life without giving you guys a choice. No, the position of a prophet, amen, is not to enforce the prophetic on the people. No, the prophetic operates via wisdom. And if you're wise, you will buy into it. Nobody forces you. You cannot be forced into this thing. You have to choose. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. But I will always give you, amen, the, 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 the opportunity because it is dangerous to live in a society in a community where you don't have an opportunity amen to choose truth yeah, all, all, all you're seeing around is all error error camouflage as truth I can assure you this is pure water this is clean water this is flowing from Emmanuel's vein this is truth and you can then decide so let's not kid ourselves that in this new day, you've got to understand that there's a voice, amen, of the young prophet and there's a voice, amen, of the mature prophet. I, listen to this. I never said the voice of the old prophet. Old and maturity are two different things. Old is that to which has become obsolete. It no, it, it no longer has the authority, the voice to speak into the realities of the day. It's old. You see, you see, Eli was, not, Eli was not a man we can say mature. He was an old priest. Because, because there was a man by the name Amen, Moses at 80. He was called into ministry. Moses entered ministry at the age of 80. <laughs> he thought he was ready at the age of 40. They say you're not ready. For, for the kind of ministry that is committed into your hand that you're going to be carrying out, you will need another 40 years. In fact... Moses had forgotten about ministry while they were training him. And that's, you see, and that is the secret to ministry. If God ever calls you into ministry and all you want to do is to, to fulfill it, to fulfill it by all means and all methods, it, 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 might, it might just be that you may not really be called. Maybe you are suffering from insecurity because insecurity has led me people to do so many things. So they said, Moses, no. We don't operate ministry this way. They plunge him into another 40 years. So at this point, he said, look, let's forget this thing. Moses decided to go marry, you know, a woman from the, from the, Midi, from, from, from the Midianites. He married a woman from the Midianites. And he became a shepherd. That's something that under Pharaoh, you cannot do. You see, no Egyptian are allowed to, you know, to rear cattle, to rear sheep, because they see it as demeaning. So they, they, they get, you know, you know, slaves to do that. And remember, Moses grew under under Pharaoh, but the next job Moses would, 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 would take, amen, <clears throat> is to learn, amen, to be a what a cattle rearer, a shepherd. Yeah, because he needed to understand that. You see, Moses learned all the ways of Egypt. He learned all the, all the uh, 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 you know, system of education in Egypt. He learned that. And that was good. I mean, Moses, Bible says Moses was a well-learned man. So when you go read in, in, in Hebrews, he says, I cannot speak. Something happened to him. Not like he cannot speak. They have, they have, they have altered his voice and his vocal cord. Halabashaya, they... Moses was mighty in words. He studied in the, some of the best university. Maybe nowadays you will say, well, he studied in Princeton, he studied in, in, in Harvard, in Oxford, and all this university. 
I mean, he was he was with the high and the mighty. He was ready to govern. He was ready to rule from a position of an Egyptian. He was an adopted. Heaven is speaking to us. Heaven is speaking to us. So this is Moses. I'm talking about the concept of the young prophet and the you know the mature prophet. We're coming to a place of maturity. I know your call, but your calling has not has not has not take the new shape, amen, of matured identity. I know you have fought lions and bears. But the next thing you're going to be facing, you will need more than the capacity of a lion, of a, of, of, of a bear killer and a lion killer, amen, to slay this giant. Something must happen within the structure, amen, of your ministry, of your calling, of your giftings and of your grace, of your intellectual capacity. Everything about your life must be upgraded and must be updated. You must leave the realm, amen, of normalcy and, and push yourself amen into a day amen of divine engagement but that will only come because you have allowed the spirit of god to take you through the process of development through transitions yes we're tracking this in david as we track it also amen in isaac we saw the same thing in moses are you listening? Are you hearing what the Lord is doing? What the, this is this is a point. You see, we say all this thing so that when you pray, you know how to pray. Father, I thank you for my life that this day, as I hear your voice, I am shifting from this former location. I'm moving away from my former position of trophy. I see that you're bringing a new challenge. You're calling me into a new, a new realm, a new position of engagement. I see that the standard of your kingdom has shifted, has, has been upgraded again. Lord, I position myself in that reality where I can engage. Lord, I strip myself of everything I know in the past. I ask you this day to baptize me once again with the grace and humility to rise up and, 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 and stand in the place where I can learn, I can see. And you're saying yes to those challenges that heaven is bringing. You're saying yes to those, you know, uh, 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 issues. You're saying yes and you're saying, Father, thank you for your wisdom, for your grace in my life. The ability to hear, to listen, to be quiet, to, to, to be sensitive. Lord, I thank you that you are developing my capacity to discern and receiving. That's how you pray. Every time a new day dawns on you, your prayer life changes. The prayer life changes. You cannot be praying in the day where you're called to face Goliath. And you're praying the way you used to pray when you're in the charismatic, you're in the, you know, you're in the Pentecostal church. You can't be praying that way. The de Listen, <laughs> the devil say, come. I will, I will, today I will give your head to the, to the vultures. You get, are, you, are you getting the point? Another 40 years was given to Moses. The backside of the wilderness. 
he became a shepherd that was the first thing and the only thing he needed to be to be a true leader because in leading sheep you will know how to lead people In leadership, you will know how to lead people because sheep will teach you, amen, how to have, develop, grow, mature, amen, in the fruit of the Spirit. My sheep hear my voice. That's a relationship you develop. Sheep don't wake up one morning and suddenly know your voice. You've got to develop a relationship. And this is not just a, a, you know, a concept that is limited to you know, pastoring, no. In fact, I'm not talking about pastoring. I'm talking about pastoring your own life, your community, your environment. I'm talking about the capacity for divine administration. That's what I'm talking about. That as you grow in the things of God, your identity changes to know how to take over, to know how to rule. Rule that in the midst of the enemy. Rule in the midst of the, your enemy doesn't mean abuse. It means apply the wisdom of God. Apply the knowledge God has given to you. Amen. Position yourself where heaven has positioned you to the extent that you can actually rule. The rulership of the kingdom of God, amen, is via wisdom and justice. Righteousness and justice. So 40 years was given. You see, when it comes to God preparing us for what he has ordained for us, time, time, time relates to our position of submission. Time submits to our position of submission. It's not the other way around. God doesn't say, oh, well, this guy, he needs to quickly finish. No, no, no. The urgency of what God wants to do in your life, amen, is connected to your awareness of what the Father wants to do and your ability to submit to it and allow time to be fast track. You see, Jesus finished his job in three and a half years, but the first 16, 18 years of his life, we heard nothing about him because the last time we heard about him, amen, he was being searched. He was being looked for by his parents. And suddenly, the Bible says, he submit to his parents. So that position of submission was a position of training, grooming, preparation. Yes, I told you earlier about the concept, amen, of the tutors. Parents are called not just to birth us, but to also train us, to tutor us. Train up your child. In the way it should go. So parents must have advanced prophetic sight. This is huge. That's why you, you, you cannot go into marriage without having a clear understanding. Amen. Of your prophetic identity. Listen to this. I didn't just say your humanity. Your humanity. You cannot raise a child from a position of humanity. Humanity is what the world uses. And that's why today in America, all right, you, you find certain groups who say they are doing all kinds of things. They are teaching children, children, they are teaching them, all right, how to explore, all right, their, 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 their gay, you know, uh, uh, identity or their lesbian identity. I'm talking about children. They are teaching them this nonsense. All in the name of democracy and freedom. That's perversion of, of the highest order. So that's why I've got to touch all these things. So if you as a parent, you don't even understand who you are in God. You don't understand your value system in the things of the spirit. How can you prepare, hallelujah, an instrument for God? Because that's the work of a parent. The work of a parent, amen, is to prepare an instrument for God. Is to prepare, amen, their children, amen, to be used of God. Listen, check most of the you know you know uh, men of God that we read about you know great men of God that did great things gr icons how do you think those people got to where they, they, they got to their parents and and if they don't have parents in their life God will bring somebody into their life that will train them that will build them 
And if they are nobody in their life, God will bring a situation, circumstance that will parent them. Come on. I was parent by circumstance and situation. God will never leave his own without a witness. No. If God places a call upon your life, he will take you through, amen, the principle of parenthood. He will take you through, amen, a process that will empower you, that will develop you. You will be trained. You will be trained on the concept of restraint, of constraint. You will be trained to be disciplined. Not just parents who want to lay hands and pray for you alone, but they have the capacity to speak into your destiny, to shape, amen, your life in alignment to God's prophetic, you know, season. There's a, there's a prophetic timeline over your life that parents must walk with, must understand. Train up your child. You didn't just say pray for them. Prayer is one part. In fact, prayer is just one percent. But you pray because you have sight. I have sight into the life of my children. Because there's nothing God does within the context, amen, of his prophetic intention for our life, amen, that is not tagged with divine purpose. Everything that happens to you, all right, is tagged with a divine purpose. How you were born, where you were born, the, the, your parents that is given to you, all right, the reason why you are in, in a South African, you are Zimbabwe, you are, you know, a Nigeria, you are from America. There's a reason for that. Everything about our life, amen, is connected to a divine prophetic objective. The person you got married to, good or bad, there's a reason for that person. So you see, if we understand God's prophetic purpose for our life, even the issue of divorce, amen, will reduce drastically. The reason why people are divorced is because they have not tracked the purpose of God. They don't understand why God placed that person, that man, that woman in their life. They don't understand why God placed them in certain situations. Your job, all right, the what you call secular work, amen, there's a reason for that. In the things of God, there is nothing like secular or spiritual. Everything is one. Hallelujah. My position as a prophet, amen, is, is clear. And we grow, we develop, we can grow, we can enhance, amen, our grace and our calling in the things of the Spirit. What am I talking about? I'm talking about, amen, understanding, growing into the full reality, the full identity, amen, of your calling in this day, so you can engage from the position, hallelujah, of strength and courage. And you're not afraid, you're not chicken out, you're not hiding in some holes, you're not in some cave. Friends, we have left cave Adullam. We are following David, but this day, heaven is bringing us out of the cave called Adullam. We're coming, amen, into a new day in Christ. We're entering a, rea a reality, a transition of Ziglag. And from Ziglag, we will go, amen, to the next dimension in the spirit. This is our position. Can you see? They left cave to begin to climb mountains. <laughs> Come on. If we're going to take the higher places of our day, if we're going to become a voice to our generation, if we're going to become that man, that woman, amen, that is resource with capacity and authority, amen, we must leave the cave. We need the cave, amen, to be trained, to be secure. We need the cave. There's a time where the, where, where the, where the, the call, the, the leadership the, you know, the, the children of God, the people of God. Was it Josiah? At the age of eight, Atalia wanted to well, <laughs> Atalia wanted to kill him. The Bible talks about the priest, the priest of God. They went to hid him in the house of God. Because Atalia wants to kill everything that defies the authority of God, that defies the legitimate voice of God in the earth, like Jezebel. Yes, it's the same spirit. We're tracking them. So the Bible says the priest, they went to hid him. That's a cave. They hid him. They hid him. <laughs> yes. When God hides you, don't try to bring out your head. If you bring out your head, Atalia will finish you. <laughs> Jezebel will make you a minced meat. That position of being hidden amen, is a position where you are being trained. When the time comes for you to come out, listen to this. You will not even need to start praying about it. They will bring you out. The true priest of God will bring you out and enthrone you. You've been called to be a king. You've been designed to be a king. You will rule. And Natalia will be judged. But that's not the time to be flexing your muscle. Ah, ah, I've got authority. No, you submit. Submit. We're talking about position of authority. We're talking about the concept of leadership. Because, listen to this. You, you may ask me, well, why are you making all this noise? Because... 
we tracked something in in uh, 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 yesterday. Remember, I said yesterday, if you were following me yesterday, in in First Samuel seventeen, we tracked uh, you know a, a scripture in verse fifty five, and that led us to verse um, fifty six. Remember verse fifty five. Yes, I stopped in fifty five yesterday. I, I, I'm not forgetting. I'm gonna come back to comparing you know uh, the position of the young prophet and the mature prophet because it all tallies to what we're talking about because we're talking about maturity we're talking about maturity so let me quickly read this just to give you a context to what we're dealing with uh, 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 um, 55 55 I saw watch David going out to meet the Philistine he said to Abner commander of his army Abner Whose son is that young man? So we've tracked that yesterday. We've talked about that. So you need to listen to yesterday's uh, uh, um, teaching again. Uh, the one we did in the morning. You need to listen to that. In fact, we've been talking about, for, f- talking about this for a while now. But here is the next question. Bible says, as you know, uh, um, verse um, 50, 50, 56. Then the king said, remember, the king asked a question. He asked Abner, whose son is this? Abner replied, I don't know. The next thing he said in in verse 56, the king said, find out whose son, whose son, find out whose whose son. Somebody gave back to this young man. (laughs) Find out, amen, find out whose son is this young man. Because Abner said, I don't know. I don't know his father. I don't know his father. Isn't the reason why people are running around today looking for fathers? All right? Looking for fathers. They want fathers. They want somebody to father them. But we've got to understand. We've got to understand that you, you cannot grab somebody and make that person your father. Today people want to become you know fathers as long as you can pay them. There are so many people who have come to me and they say, oh, I would like you to be my father. I say, I can't be your father. I can mentor you. I can empower you. I can speak into your life. But I cannot. I cannot you know father you that, that's a that's a huge responsibility there's so much to that that we, we don't know you've got to be carrying my seed are you ready to carry my seed that means everything you've ever known in your life you have to collapse it you have to i mean throw them to you know valley kindron then i have to birth you again that's scriptural Paul said, you are my sons whom I travel again. That's the key word, again. Yes. So you can bring yourself under somebody's authority and leadership as long as you are ready, amen, to completely submit and surrender your entire life to the ministry, to the grace, to the, you know, to the wisdom of that person. It's possible. That's what the scripture said. Did you think that Paul gave birth to all those children? No. They came under his, under his, under his covering. And Paul said, I have to travel again in birth. It's his job. <laughs> it is job. I know what it means to travel, to begin to see the formation of Christ. You see, it's not the formation of the Father in you. It is the formation of Christ. The Father does not form himself in the Son. He forms Christ in them. This is heavy. A true Father does not form himself in the sons. He forms Amen. Christ in the sons. Because sonship is an identity of the spirit. In fact, sonship is an identity of Christ. Christ is the pattern son. He learned obedience by the things he suffered. He submit himself. He does not, Bible says, the Bible says he does not count himself to be equal with God. He left his glory and submit himself. He took upon himself the form of a man. A body you have prepared for me. I have come low in the volume of the book to do your will, O God. Christ was Christ was God. But for his ministry, amen, to be relevant and to be able to defeat the works of darkness, he had to take the form of a son. One of the definitions of sonship, amen, is submission, is obedience. Obedience. This is not witchcraft. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, nobody, nobody, nobody forced me to do what I'm doing. Nobody forced me. I willingly, I willingly laid down my life. Yes. 
Oh, you say, oh, but that is Jesus. Uh -uh. Jesus, Jesus saw that concept. Amen. Jesus saw that concept in Isaac, who was a type of Christ. Amen. I mean, Isaac was 17. Some, 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 you know, theologians said Isaac was actually, you know, 18. Some say maybe he was uh, um, younger. But the reality is, I told you earlier that Isaac had a voice in his father's house. He asked the father, how many people today have the authority, the audacity to ask their father questions? No. Papa, 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 stop that nonsense. Papa, Papa, who told you? Who gave you that nonsense? Submit yourself. When you, you see, when you see a man following Christ, you submit. A man who is not following Christ, who is just using, using the name of Jesus and using principles, some principle here and there in Christ, that is a charlatan. That is a thief. That's somebody who wants to prey on you. You say you're teaching the people rebellion. No, I'm setting the people free. Because listen to this. Listen to this. If somebody is actually called to build you, to mentor you, to empower, to speak into your life, your spirit will be drawn to them and their spirit will be drawn to you. And you will not feel obliged. You will not feel as if somebody is controlling you. In fact, you will love it. You will want it. It will be at your pleasure to serve. And when they see that you're going overboard about the concept of, you know, submission, they themselves will tell you, ah, ah, ah. Don't, 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 don't do that. That's almost like worshiping me now. Don't do that. But these men, they love it so. They love when the people come and bow to them. And they bow to them. That's a different spirit. You see, my position is to bring a balance. I know a lot of people today that are no longer in, you know, in, in, in relationship with God and the things of God because of how somebody mistreated them because of the abuse, spiritual abuse. I've said it before, I'm going to say it again now. Listen, the worst form of abuse is not sexual abuse, it's spiritual abuse. A lot of people do not actually get healed from spiritual abuse. Many people never get healed. It damage, it damage, that thing damage their entire structure of existence. Are you getting this, friends? It damages their, 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 their construct. Because who you are, remember, your true identity is spiritual. So if somebody lay holds of your spiritual identity and damages that, you're finished. You're gone. <laughs> you're finished. No matter how rich you are. And it says rich people. Listen to this. When the image of Hitler was damaged by the church, Hitler became a beast unleashed upon the human generation the catholic church damaged hitler's identity first of all from wrong parenting then capitalism entered that was it you you want to destroy a generation a nation a society a home a family abuse their spirituality You know what I said? You, if you want to quickly, fa the fastest way to destroy any society, all right, is to destroy the spiritual essence, the spiritual identity of people. That's the best way. And the devil is doing it and he's using that in South Africa today. That's why, you know, all the politicians, everybody's crumbling. What are we going to do? B because you can see, you can see spiritual abuse. I mean, I. I I mean, I've taken the brunt of spiritual abuse online. People have challenged me online because of the sin of some people. Because of the sin of some people, a group that I, I mean, I was belonging, that I was sharing just the love of God because obviously most of them are white. They start throwing stone at me. Go with your gospel. Go with your God. Go with you. We don't. You, you, you're just looking for an opportunity to take a, take advantage of the people. We don't want you here. The, the next by the next day, but obviously I saw that that also carried, you know, uh, you know what they were saying to some extent is is legitimate. But, but you see, what makes it worse was that they were looking at my skin. They were not looking at what I was saying because I wasn't even sharing anything that is abusive. I was just encouraging the people. No, but 
the fact that they've seen, they've watched TV, they've seen these men of God, these so-called prophets. All right? So that basically gave them what? More fuel to speak. So those of us that are called into the prophetic ministry, we've got to be ready to take a lot of this bronze. We've got to be ready. I mean, I've been taking a lot of stones. I remember back there, before I came to this country, we've been dealing with this issue of, of you know, falsehood and false fatherhood and false spiritual position. I could remember I said to God, Lord, can I just keep that name prophet? Can I just keep it underneath? I don't want to be called a prophet again because of how they have misused and abused this, this office. I, I'm going to operate in it, but I, I will not call myself a prophet. And the Lord said, you dare not. You take, all right, but... The good and the bad aspect. You take it, wear it, love it. And from that day, I'm not ashamed to call, to say to myself and to tell people, I'm a prophet. But you will never see me go out there, call myself, or, or introduce myself, I'm prophet Isaiah. I will never do that. Because that's a, that's a misrepresentation. I'm not prophet Isaiah. My name is Isaiah Phillips. And I operate in the prophetic. And when people look at me, they say, but you speak like an apostle. Well, I might have an apostolic grace. Because the thing is, it's not about the office. It's about the coming into the fullness of Christ. And when you come into the fullness of Christ, they will call the best of the grace and the gifts that needs to be expressed at every given season of your life. So when you hear me speak, you say, wow, this must be a sound apostle. Yes, I'm an apostle. Yes, I'm a teacher. Yes, I've got passion and love to preach the gospel. Some of you have watched me preach on taxi. Who says apostles and prophets cannot preach in the taxi? Who says they can't preach on the street? Who says they must just be flying all over to preach? Come on. They're not representing Christ. You want to see people truly called to be in the grace and in the gift of Christ. Watch them leave their high position. Go into the market. Not the marketplace. Go into market. Go into streets. Go into places that, you know, people would people of their caliber would not go. Go there and speak. Reach the people on the, on, on the ground there. Reach out to them. Touch the people. That was Jesus. The definition of the fivefold. He walked on the street. He touched people. He allowed people to touch him. To touch him. Ah, not this man. You can't touch them. <laughs> Their bodyguards will finish you before you even reach them. You think in the days of Jesus there were not people plotting to kill him? Did I hear you say something? I said, did you think that in the days of Jesus there were not people plotting, the Pharisees, the Sahendrins, plotting to kill him? You think in the days of Jesus they were not assassins? Oh, come on. I'm not hearing you. Do you think that the disciples of Jesus were his bodyguards? How come that woman who was defined as unclean was able to touch the garment of Jesus? Because everybody's stronging on him, pushing him here and there. You know, it's, here's the man walking on the road, and everybody pushing him because everybody wants to have a piece of him. You see, if if you're tracking with the spirit of God, when Jesus come to town, you want to have a piece of him. I mean, imagine Jesus come to town. I want to fly. I mean, the Bible talk about Zacchaeus. He went to <laughs> this guy. I mean, this guy is wise. He said to himself, "I'm so short. I mean, if I try to." Touch this guy, they're gonna trample on me. So this guy decided, okay, I know what I'm gonna do. I know that I know the route this man is gonna to take today. He went to position himself on the tree. Jesus saw his fate. If I was in the day of Zacchaeus, I'm sure I would do the same. You see, you don't need always need to have strength, you need to have wisdom. So this guy he went to locate himself on a tree. Are you getting what we're talking about? We've got to understand that, you know, ministry have been perverted. Leadership have been perverted. Fatherhood have been perverted. I've got sons and daughters that we've trained, we've built in ministry. I will not, you won't hear me call them and say, that's my daughter, that's my son. I don't do that. Because they have their own life to live. You've got to learn to release people. You've got to learn to, you know, 
You've got to learn not to own people. That's the spirit of the Lekonianthans. That's where the spirit of Catholicism came from. That's where they, they got the idea of father, father. There's nothing father, but look at what the Catholic Church has done to those young ch children. They, they, they've, they've raped them. They've, they've abused them sexually. The Catholic Church, many of the fathers, see, see what they've done. Come on. Can we speak truth? But it's not just limited to the Catholic Church. It's all over. It's all over. You pray on the innocency of the children. All those so-called, you know, bellboys, you know, um, you know, children that I don't know what they call them now. Back then, in the Catholic Church, at least I think I did that one or twice. Just you know, somebody, one of my friends back then, when I was still young. I, I, obviously, I wasn't even born again. I was still a teenager. You know, you know, my, my servant they called them. Those boys have been abused. That's why we see the government of the world today challenging the Catholic Church to come and suffer their crime. But it's happening today in the church. Thank you, sir. It's happening today in the church. It's happening today in the church, in the charismatic, in the Pentecostal, in what we call the apostolic among the reformation it's just that the way we abuse people in the in the apostolic reformation today is that we use the truth we use truth to abuse people to control we use truth truth to control people yes you say truth yes you can use truth as a weapon to destroy people when that truth is not balanced you say i can take one truth and run with it and so run with that truth to the point that there are no other truth balancing that truth that becomes an error and that is the power of cultism. Cultism is built upon 99.9 .9 truth. You see? So we, we, we've got to understand what the, what the Lord is doing in our day. Our, our sight, our understanding has to be clear. So let me go back to... Uh, let me just quickly give you... I said I was going to give you three points out of this nine that I've written down. All right? A young prophet... A young prophet's judgment is driven. Excuse me. Or a young a young prophet. All right. A young prophet is judgment driven. A young prophet. When it comes to a young prophet, a young prophet, amen, is judgment driven. While a mature prophet, all right, is mercy inspired. A young prophet is is judgment driven. A young prophet just want to see judgment. Let's call down fire. Fire. Is that those ministry? Fire! <laughs> a young prophet, amen, is judgment, judgment, judgment is coming. A mature prophet is mercy driven. The Bible talk about when you finally enter into the holies of holy, what you're going to see is not fire and judgment. What you're going to see is the mercy seat, mercy throne. So you've got to track this. So that's one. Number two, the, the young prophet is driven by revelation. Revelation. <laughs> we, we want revelation. We want something fresh. And that's what they tag as revelation. Something new. Something, something fresh. Give us something. The, the Bible says... In that day, they will be, you know, gathering for themselves. You know, teachers who will tell them what they want to hear. A young prophet is driven by revelation. Reve oh, wow. I remember when I was very young. I mean, I used to love revelation. Because a sense of revelation gives you a sense of, yes. You, 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 you know, you're there. Revelation does not define maturity, my friend. Because revelation is a learned act. You can learn how to catch revelation. You can, I can teach you. If you stay on a word long enough, that word begins to lift up. That word begins to come alive. If you stay on any word long enough, just stay there. That word begins to leave the realm of just letter. Suddenly, 
the mind gets to be illuminated because the word of God is light. Suddenly, the light of God's word begins to illuminate your mind. You begin to know something about that thing. So the young prophet is driven by revelation. But the mature prophet is driven by wisdom. Wisdom builds a house. You need a revelation to know. But after you know things, you've got to understand that what are you going to do? How are you going to use what you know? That's where the problem is. It's easy to see things. Zechariah will ask, what are these? What does that mean? John, the revelator, asking question. This, he was saying things, but he doesn't understand. He said, and the angel said, and I will explain to you, all right, the mystery of the beast, the mystery of that. You see, somebody must show you, must explain to you. There was somebody leading John all through the things that they were showing him. To the point that at a point, the angel that was leading him, he was almost worshipping the angel. Ah, my Lord, revelation. I worship you. The angel said, please don't do, don't, don't commit sacrilege. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm not Jesus. Certain revelation we know can bring us to a point where we think we've seen Christ. Meanwhile, it is just an expression amen, of an angelic manifestation. And if we're not careful, we will be worshipping the angel. Don't you know of churches today worshipping angels? That's why Paul in Colossians talked about those who worship angels. Because when angels move, remember they are supposed to be messengers of God. In fact, the Bible says they wait on us. But if you don't understand the dynamics of the Spirit and the operations of the Spirit, guess what? You will mistakenly, be, you mistakenly worship angels. You will mistakenly worship miracles, signs and wonders. That's why the Bible says, if the days were not cut short, even the very elect, an elect that has not been mature, you see, the fact that somebody is an elect does not mean the person is mature. Jesus is not coming for the elect, he's coming for the mature. You can be elect, many are called, few are chosen. Even the very elect will be deceived. So don't make a noise about, oh, I'm elected, I'm called of God. Yes, you can be called, but you can be deceived. You need somebody that will imprint the wisdom of God upon your heart. And that comes through the ministry of elders, mature. And elders and maturity doesn't come by age. It comes by those who are able to track, who are able to journey with God. Undivided heart. David prayed, Lord, give me an undivided heart. That you're not distracted. Because every time you get distracted, you sink. You don't want to sink. You want to stay afloat. You want to be able to maintain amen, your position on walking on the water. You want to walk on it. Amen. You don't want to sink into it. You don't want to be, you don't want to sink. You sink when you get distracted. The greatest enemy of our walk with God is distraction. And the devil uses that all the time. Particularly if you're in the prophetic. You don't want to get distracted by these little petty little things. Some of the things we do, we say, are distractions. We get distracted, amen, in the condition of our mind. The distraction is not what happens on the outside. What happens on the outside, yes, is part of it. But the main distraction, amen, is what is happening on the inside of you. Your, your mind as a prophet, your mind as a prophet or as one called into ministry, you tracking with God. Your mind is your greatest resource, is your greatest asset. Your mind is your greatest asset. You've got your spirit, but your mind. If you've got a redeemed spirit with a transformed mind, ah, you can change the world. Because you will always hear what God is saying. Every time you cannot hear God, check the state of your mind. Whenever you find that you cannot hear God, check the state of your mind. Whenever you hear, whenever you find yourself in a situation where you don't know what God is doing, you can't hear God, amen, check the state of your mind. Your state, the, your, the state of your mind can enhance 
your capacity to hear or shut your you know your hear your, your ears from hearing so it's important you understand this <clears throat> hallelujah So, that's the second one, right? That's the second point. The young prophet is driven by revelation. A mature prophet is driven by wisdom. Jesus has become unto us wisdom. When everything that you know, you have understood about the things of God, finally becomes wisdom. Your identity changes. Your view to life changes. The way you see life, you see people changes. Your discernment is sharpened in the place of wisdom. Because revelation can make you see things and know things. But if you don't have the wisdom to know, like I said earlier, to know how to use those things, you will abuse the gift. Is that not what the young prophet does? Hey, tomorrow, yesterday, I saw you, I saw you, I saw you in that sister's house. I saw you. Were you not there? Is that not what these, these crazy guys who call themselves prophets are doing? They use their so-called gift, which I believe is not a gift. It's just a familiar spirit. Don't you understand today? We've invited familiar spirit, amen, to take the place, amen, of discernment. <clears throat> what we call word of knowledge, word of wisdom, are just some crazy things that somebody got somewhere. So somebody says, hey, you, 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 I saw you, you're trying to break this, uh, you know, other person's, take this other person's wife or this person's, and everybody go crazy because the, the, the man of God says, is it true or wrong? She said, yes, it's true. Why are you glory, glo, glo, you know, glorying in that which is destroying somebody's life? That is not how to operate the gift. That is not the operations of the gift of the spirit. That is destruction. That is manipulation. That is intimidation. That is abuse. If that is ever the gift. That is an abuse of the gift. Don't you understand? You can abuse the gift. You can abuse the gift of the spirit. And today we are abusing it. Because there is, a, there is an order. There is a decorum that we must have in the house of God. There is a manner of sitting we must have. There's a way we must, we must hear prophecy and judge prophecy. And there's a way we must speak. There's certain prophecy. If God speaks to you about somebody, you can whisper to their ears. You don't have to speak on the mic for everyone to hear. You don't have to post every crazy thing. Amen. Online, in the name of the prophetic you got to learn to constrain and restrain yourself. Discipline yourself. There's discipline. The Bible says the ministry, the gift of the prophet is subject to the prophet. You are greater than the gift. Every house is built by the man. Christ is the builder of all things. When your gift is submitted to the ministry of Christ in you, amen. Christ will show you and teach you how to use the gift and not abuse the gift. You see, whenever we abuse the gift, it's because the soul is in charge. We use the gift to make statements, to tell people. We give false impression. See, we, we need maturity. Was it yesterday or a few days ago, or yesterday, I can't remember when I said, South Africa needs mature prophet mature prophet just like any other nation today if there's anything the world is crying for is mature prophet mature prophet amen they operate their revelation but wisdom they can do all these things that the young prophets are doing but they are not they are not fixative on those aspects they are they are fixative on what is called a more excellent way there's something called a more excellent way a more excellent way there's that which is good, it's acceptable, but there's that all that call the third dimension, the perfect will of God. We don't want to walk in the concept of that which is just good or accepted. 
those are days of ignorance we're coming to a day of a more excellent way that which is perfect perfection means maturity perfection doesn't mean that oh you are without sin it means maturity maturity in everything you're doing the way you speak how you speak the way you communicate how you interact must express maturity the way you talk to people all right if you if you are ever talking down on people in the name of god in the name of the prophetic you're forever talking down on people that is not that is not maturity that's a narcissistic spirit that's narcissism nobody no man no person given a minister of calling within the construct of the house of god that is permitted to talk down on the people of god you didn't die for the people jesus died for them they belong to jesus they're jesus bride that's why we've got to balance what we talk about in the apostolic. We always talk about sons, sons of God, sons of God. Ah, you've got to understand, Jesus is not coming for a son. He's coming for a bride. How would you like somebody to talk down on your wife while you're there looking? The person is ranting and raking and talking down on your wife or somebody you love, you want to marry. And the person is abusing and misusing and just, you know, disrespecting the person. Or the other way around. And you're just there smiling. Something must be wrong with you. Even if you cannot fight, you're gonna you're gonna flex your muscle a bit and say, "Ah, uh-uh, ah, no! How dare you talk to my wife like that? I will not allow you to abuse my wife. No, 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 no. No, you can't speak to my wife like that's my wife. What do you think Jesus is doing? You think Jesus is just watching this man of God, you know, sh- shutting down and abusing and telling his wife to eat grass? To, I mean. You are supposed to be a friend of the bridegroom. You're supposed to be preparing the bride for the bridegroom. This is, the, this is something Jesus showed us amen, in regards to the ministry of, of John. John was to prepare the bride, the, you know, the bride, the, the, the bride for the bridegroom. So that when the bridegroom finally showed up, that was the end of the ministry, amen, of John. But when the bride appeared, you still want to be there, you know, showing your face. Then something else is... <laughs> Come on! These people have taken the position of Christ. In fact, they don't want Christ again to come and take his bride. That's not ministry, that's something else. All right, number three, let me give you this one and I'll stop. The young prophet boast with the word of knowledge, the mature prophet, the mature prophet exercise constraint. The young prophet boasts with the word of knowledge. I give up. I've got a word, I've got a word. And they announce it and everybody go, oh. But the mature prophet exercise constraint all right i'll keep the rest but we're tracking something here in david all right so Saul asked abner he said go find out about who is the father of this young man verse 57 i'm re- i'm back to uh first samuel chapter 17 57. As soon as David returned from killing the Philistine, as soon as David finally returned from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul. Listen to this. With David still holding the head the, you know, the Philistine's head. I mean, can you imagine this young boy, this young boy carrying, bringing the head of a giant? That's his trophy. <laughs> Bringing the head of Goliath. Can you believe that? This young David. Ah, you've got beef for you. Who can be against you? As soon as David returned from killing the Philistine. And Abner took him. And Abner took him. Brought him before Saul. With David still holding the Philistine's head. Listen to this. Whose son are you? Young man. Saul asked him.
Saul was not even interested again in the victory. Saul was now interested in the identity of his father. Before he was interested in the identity of David. Secondly, now he's interested in the identity of David's father. That's a powerful principle there. I mean, yeah, here, here is David with the trying to look for something to, you know. This is the head of Goliath. Goliath. David's coming. <sighs> oh, King live forever. Here's your trophy. Here's your victory. <laughs> and so looked at David and said, Young man, whose son are you? In other words, David connected, excuse me, so connected the victory of David to a seed of a father, to an impartation of a father, to a grace of a father, to a ministry of a father. Are you getting this, friends? What son are you, young man? Saul asked. Who is your father? Who birthed you? Who, who, who imparted such grace and honor and, and strength? Who trained you? I've seen things in your life, young man, that I've not seen in anyone in Israel. So who is your father? The Bible says the world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. In the day of the manifestation of the sons of God, the world will be asking this question. Who is our father? Because the fathers of this world have failed woefully. The fathers of our time have been castrated. They've been emasculated. By Jezebel. They have no voice. They have no power to train a warrior such as David. Who is your father, young man? Where did you get such a revelation, such wisdom, such knowledge, such, such position and stature? Where? Who is your father? This is powerful. This, this question calls us to probe a lot of things within the structure of our life. Who is your father? He's young, but he just killed a giant. He is young, but he just cut off the head. Of the army. Of the Philistine. Because that's what the scripture said. As soon as David returned from killing the Philistine. So he killed the, in, 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 in Goliath. David killed the entire army of the Philistine. Because Goliath represented amen, the entire army of the Philistine. Did you see the did you, did you see the you know the the, the 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 shift in focus? Saul was not looking at the hand of victory again. He was looking for the identity of the victor. Oh, you didn't hear that. Saul was no longer looking at the hand that brought victory. He was looking because Saul could connect and say, for you to have such a victory. Somebody, somewhere, something must have deposited such grace into your life. Who is your father? Tell me about your father. 
I mean, I can write a whole book on this. In fact, we did a material some time ago on the fatherhood, which maybe I might have to look at again. Because, I mean, this is a fresh one. Who is your father? Is that not a question today society is asking? Who is your father? Fathers in the church are filled. Fathers are divorcing their wives. Fathers are today are being caught to be embezzling church money. Fathers are using church money, church resource, to build mansions for themselves while the sheep are left in the cold. Oh, sorry. You, you may not like the way I'm putting it, but this is the truth. Who is your father? Can I ask you this question? Who is your father? I know you'll be quick to say, Oh, God is my father. Hey, please. <laughs> it's easy to look for a convenient answer. Do you have you actually come to know and realize that truly you've transited from a position of knowing God as God to Him being a father? I can tell you that because I grew up without having to really get to know, you know, the few the few knowledge I, I you know I had about my father before he died was a cherished one. But I wish I knew my father more. I wish I had spent more time with him. So, that left a big hole in my heart. But God filled that hole. When I finally got to know him as my father. See, there's a value system of knowing God as God. It's a different thing to know God as your father. That's why I tell people, if you have come to the reality, the revelation and the, 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 the truth that God is your father. You're not under the idea, the belief system that if you don't have somebody covering you, if you, if you don't have a man covering you, then you're an orphan. That's a false teaching. That is a false teaching because not not all people living on earth today have got a father. But we all have a father. We've got to, we've got to track people, amen, on an individual basis to define their identity and their position. Like I said, I believe in the ministry of fathers. I believe. And for you to believe, you've got to be able to find it in the word of God. Yes, Jesus said, Jesus said in Mark, is in Matthew, Matthew 23, 9. He says, he says, do not call every, 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 everyone on earth your father. Have you heard that scripture before? Do not call every man or everyone your father. Now, if, if you say you, you don't have a father, all he's saying, and this statement is related to all right, the culture of the day, the beliefs. You see, that's why if we don't interpret scripture based on context, we misinterpret scripture. And once, once there's a misinterpretation of scripture, amen, it, it turns to error. And once there's an error that is not corrected, it can become a generally accepted belief system or philosophy of, of, of lifestyle. And there are things that God is correcting right now, all right, that we, we never touch. We never, we never, you know, looked at those things. And today those things have become a big problem to us. So when Jesus said, do not call everyone, listen to this. That's it. Let me read from Matthew 20, 29, verse 8 and 9. But you are not, listen to this. But you are not to be called a rabbi. For you have one teacher. And you are all brothers. So he's talking about the context here is within the community of the saints, within the community of, you know, the church, he is just 
building. In fact, at, at that point, the church has not been formed. But this group of people following Jesus Christ, because the church began, amen, on, on the day of Pentecost. But this community that he was leading, he was following, he was shepherding. There was, a, there was an issue among them. And he's trying to correct that thing. And he says, hey, but I'm saying to you, don't, don't call yourself a rabbi. Because there was a, there was a, a condition where we, we're beginning to see, and that's part of the human nature, you know, when we, when we are in a community and you begin to see certain people express certain knowledge in certain area. You know, we, we call them oh, rabbi, teacher. I remember back then, you know, while we were growing up, you know, in the church back then, while, you know, while I was still young. I remember people used to call me revelation, revelation. You know, it's, a, you know, it's like a, what's the word now? It's like, an, it's like an, 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 a nickname. You know, it's a joke, but because, you know, I'm very quick to share, you know. I call the people, come less. This is what the Lord is saying to me. So they call me revelation. <laughs> they call me, you know. So you find this idea that you begin to grow and people start looking, starting to see certain tra traits in your life and they start calling you certain things. So this is what Jesus is addressing here. But you are not to be called a rabbi. He's addressing something within his own community. But beyond that, what the people are doing in the community were things that they saw in the, in the society. Because there were certain people in the community, in the society, who called themselves rabbi, teacher. Because they expressed the wisdom of Moses. And these are the Pharisees. All right? And because they speak in terms of the Torah, and they have such you know, insight about the Torah and the law of Moses. All right? The Pentateuch. These guys can dissect the Pentateuch. But here is the, the word himself among them. They were not recognizing him. And I'm sure there were times that they were making reference to, you know, uh, uh, maybe the, the, the teachings of, of Gamaliel. Remember, Paul studied under Gamaliel. Gamaliel was, uh, was a renowned professor of the law. So there was this issue because we've got to interpret scripture amen, in the reality of of society sometimes when we're reading scripture it's like we just we, we lose our brain we lose our <laughs> you know it's like this we were living in a different world they were not living in a different world you know to our world it's still the same world it's just that the culture remember what defines life amen is culture tradition and beliefs culture tradition and beliefs yes these are philosophy the world has always been governed by philosophy the stronger philosophy amen stands so, this is a word that is challenging, amen, a prominent philosophy, a belief system that if you know certain things, you're a rabbi. Even though they only know 1%, there are other areas that they have not touched. So, Jesus is addressing this issue ab about the scribes and the Pharisees. He say, in your midst, I don't want you bringing that false order, that nonsense belief system into this community. Do not call yourself rabbi, for you only have one teacher. And who is he referring to? Me. Look to me. This is what Jesus is saying. You only have one teacher. I'm your teacher. Look to me. Follow me. Don't bring wrong doctrine. Don't bring wrong beliefs. Don't bring... All right? And then the next thing he was addressing is the issue of fa you know, fatherhood, which is also a problem of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Remember the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They like to express... You know, their, their position, their false position outwardly so that everybody can say, that's a father. A father means one who has wisdom, one who sits at the gate, who can pronounce judgment regarding what is happening in society. That is the definition of, father, of fatherhood, you know, back then in, in, you know, in the days of the Pharisees and even under the old covenant, all right? If you are mature, you're a person of wisdom, you're a person of insight, you're a person of grace, all right? And you have age on your side. You are called a father. Doesn't mean that you, you literally give birth to a son. It's a position. It's a position of honor. 
Fatherhood under the old covenant is a position of honor, is a position of identity of you know, a spiritual leader of one who, who, who has been graced by God, who can speak. There's a word the Lord gave to me this morning while I was thinking about In fact, I woke up with this word. Listen to this. Fathers are depository. Fathers are deposit depository of heaven's wisdom and resource for the earth. Fathers are depository, uh, are depository of heaven's wisdom amen, and kingdom resource for the earth. In the person that is a father, is a depository, is a carrier, if you will, is a treasure house. Amen. Is 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 the vault. That's the word. Is the vault of wisdom. When when you reach into him, is 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 his life is like a treasure. Is is like a well. When you when you drink, when you draw from a, from you know the well of a father. My word. That's 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 wealth. That's that is riches. You you get refreshed when you sit under Amen. The ministry of a father, and he speaks to you about things. Listen to this. The Lord just dropped this in my in my in my mind. A very good example. You see, uh, if you look at the Eastern religion, all right, they've got the people they call um, uh, uh, gurus. Then there are those they call the grand gurus. There are gurus who speak wisdom about about life all right of course their wisdom comes from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil it comes from this world all right they, they, their wisdom is 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 about nature i mean jesus is the author of nature i mean he he defines nature that's why christians need to study study and study life study nature study you know stars study things so that somebody won't get up one day and begin to you know connect wisdom to stars and then that becomes a god to the people. Come on. We are supposed to be in charge. Eternity has been placed in us. The universe, the wisdom of the universe is locked up in our spirit. The Bible says eternity dwells in us. Every dimension of wisdom that is needed, amen, is locked in you. And in you means in Christ, in you, the hope of all glory. So don't accept that new age thing that says uh, you, you are your god. Look inward. If you ever look inward, the only thing you see inward is Christ or the Antichrist. You say, this is the wisdom of a father. I'm a father to the nation. I'm a father to nations. That's why I can speak from this point. Many of the things that I've, I'm saying to you, there are things that I've not written down. They're coming from a well. Yes, there's a well. The they walk on that well. They keep digging. They, they, you know, the deeper the well, the cleaner the water. A wise man would, would draw from both the old and the new. All right? So we, we understand in context. You see, I'm, I'm teaching you now. I'm preaching now on the concept of context. Because a lot of people, we, we take scripture out of context and we just run with it. And we create all kinds of issues in the body of Christ. Like the issues of fatherhood, like I said, is being is being confused and mis misused and misinterpreted because we speak from different contexts. We speak from two extremes. No, we've got to bring everything under Christ. Christ is the head. Head means center. And we speak from that position of the center course of the kingdom of God. We walk in balance. People say things that are true, but out of context. People say things that are correct but out of context so Jesus said but do not call everyone on earth father because that was the general belief that if you're a Pharisee you've grown to certain level you have certain qualification you have certain wisdom you, you, you've gone through certain uh, uh, school you've sat under certain people suddenly you become a father like today they will say, okay, if you go to Bible school, all right, and you've passed, you, I mean, just like what they are trying to, you know, uh, to, to bring back today. In fact, that's part of some of the solution the government are trying to look for, all right, in dealing with this excesses that we're seeing in the body of Christ. That, okay, if you're called into ministry, you must have qualification. 
You must have Bible school qualification. Bible school qualification does not eradicate error. Does not eradicate because people can take a phrase of truth and run with it. No. What we need today, amen, is people that are called fathers, elders, mature prophets, mature amen, elders, mature apostles at the gate, amen, who can bring correction and alignment and speak with authority regarding amen the issues of the excesses that we're seeing in the church and within amen society that's what we need we don't just need people who have theological knowledge you can have theological knowledge and still be you know uh, uh, asking people to to eat grass theological knowledge does not prevent people amen from walking in error i mean i went to bible school but I can assure you that 80% of the things I learned in Bible school are irrelevant to what I'm saying today. Because Bible school, amen, the curriculum is also designed by a school of thought. By a school of thought. Your church can be, in fact, churches are designed to be, amen, a training ground. A true church, amen, must be able to teach theology, must be able to teach the concept of doctrine, must be able to build people, amen, in the idea, amen, of how to handle the word of God, how to balance truth, amen, how to identify error. If there is, I mean, I went to Bible school, if there is any course that I learned, which was actually, you know, an, an elective course, somebody from America came to my Bible school to do this teaching, so it's not even part of our, you know, the school curriculum, but somebody just brought this uh, uh, um, this man of God just came from America. He was a missionary, and he did this elective course, course called Truth and Error. All all the time that I've spent in Bible school, that was the only course that I could look at and say, "Wow, this changed my life." That course was called Truth and Error, and that course brought me to understand what the prophetic ministry is in terms of bringing clarity, definition, judgment, or right? balance. To the word of God, truth and error. So, most Bible school don't do things like that. They don't even know it. Many of the people today who are creating problem within the body of Christ, in fact, in America, there are people who have theological, you know, you know, uh, knowledge. Some of them are doctors. People who are trying to rewrite the Bible today. People who are saying, "Well, this thing it shouldn't be in the Bible." People who are trying to, you know, pervert. And, 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 and abuse scripture or are, are people who have doctorate degree some of them are professors people who are trying to re, you know rewrite the bible to suit amen, the feminist community to suit the feminist narrative some of those people are have doctorate degree some of them have you know you know theological you know psychological you know uh, sociology you know degrees so 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 Knowledge does not translate to accuracy. Knowledge is good to have balance, amen. But we're talking about a knowledge and a wisdom that is not of this world, amen. The Bible talks about two trees, amen. If, if people are eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, amen, their understanding of the scripture will always be turned to error, all right. If people are eating from the tree of life, you see, their, their view, understanding, and interpretation of, 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 of the Bible, amen, will always bring liberation, freedom, you know, development, transformation, not just to the church, but to society. That's why I keep telling people that when you're handling the prophetic, it's not just about judgment. The prophetic is more about building cities, building society, building the nation, building people, amen, standing in the gap. It's not about judgment. It's about restoration. You see, but a young prophet will look prophetic. You just want to speak. You just want to judge. You just want to cut down everything. No, the prophetic is about building, building in alignment to the ways of God, to the will of God, to the counsels of God. The prophetic is not just about tearing down people, pulling down things. No, it's about bringing order, government, standard, amen, accuracy, precision to life, to society. Because that's what redemption is all about. Everything God is doing today on earth, amen, can be defined and summarized in one word, redemption. Redemption. That's why the concept about the world, God is not judging the world. God is judging the people and the system of the world. Because Jesus is still coming back to reign in this world. That's why he said, occupy till I come. 
So if your idea about the prophetic is about God is going to burn everything. When the Bible talk about the world being rolled away, everything is going to be burning fire. And they, it's talking about the philosophy, the ideas of men. Then the Bible says, amen, the fire will try everything that we stand for. Yes, even in the church, the fire is coming for the church too. Yes, we will be, we will be tried by fire. And if you're built with combustible material, God help you. Everything you built, everything, everything you build, your idea, your belief, your philosophy about home, marriage, children will be burnt. Amen. But if you built, amen, on the value principle of the kingdom, amen, which is of the heavenly order. Yesterday we talked about the Jerusalem of God coming from above. Amen. There are two kingdoms. There are two nations. There are two cities. Amen. Babylon and the holy Jerusalem. And that Jerusalem is not Israel. It's not. <laughs> if you ever think the Jerusalem Jesus is coming for, coming for is Israel, you've missed it. It's coming for a people. It's coming for a church. It's coming for a bride, and they represent the order called Jerusalem. We are the Jerusalem of God on earth. We are that one the which Christ is coming into. We are being built. We are being reformed. We are the tabernacle of God. That Amen. That is being restored in this new day. Am I saying that God doesn't believe in Israel? No, I never said so. I'm just saying that is not the focus of our prophetic, you know, our, our projection. It's not one state. It is the entire state. It's an entire nation. So let's not be deceived. Let's not be carried away. All right. For all I care, you can go to Israel or, you know, till you go blue in the face. All right. <laughs> when, when, I would say when Jesus will appear, all eyes will see him wherever they are. They will see him, amen, from the north to the south, from the east to the west. So let's get our the theology right. Let's not let's not create problem for ourselves and create problem for our children and for the next generation. All right, let's not build an exclusive theology. Now, oh, come on, Father, I thank you for your word. Ah, it's just flowing. So, let's continue, verse nine. Do not call everyone. I'm reading Matthew 23, verse 9, verse 8 and 9. So he said, do not call everyone on earth your father, your father. Everybody cannot be your father. Can everybody be your father? <laughs> that would be crazy. Everybody, I mean, everybody is a father. Is that, but is that not what we do today? As long as the person is in ministry, as long as the person's got a church, as long as the person's got followers, as long as the person's got God knows what, ah, we call that person a father. We call that person a daddy. We call that person a papa. Stop that nonsense. It's nonsense. Because it's eating something. It's taking an identity of Christ away from your life. It's replacing I mean, Christ with something else. But I know where that is coming from. Guess what? It's an extension of the society. Just like back then. Amen. This issue Jesus was addressing. Amen. Was an extension. Amen. Of the accepted belief or philosophy of the society. Yes. Especially if you grow up in certain community in Africa where you know every every elderly person, amen, is, is daddy. You know, I think that is reducing now. But back then in the in the early 80s, you know, every every man or you know, late 70s, every man is a father. You know, the uncle is raping you, but he's a father. You know, that, that's a foolish idea, belief system that we brought into the African culture. That is no respect. There's a, there's a place for respect. But there's a place where we identify people by who they are. If it's an uncle, it's an uncle. It's not a father. If, if, it's, if, it's, if, it's, you know, if it's a nephew, it's a nephew. It's not an uncle. We've got, you see, we, we've got because there's a, there's a reason why we've got to locate people by their identity. Because that also gives our children, amen, the confidence to be able to connect. But when you say hey, that man is a father, so if that person abuses them, amen, they have no what? They have no position to speak, to stand, because you've already positioned that person, amen, in an authority, in a position of authority, amen, that they do not deserve. So even when, amen, they are being abused, people cannot speak out because he's a father. But he's not a father. So Jesus said, do not call every man a father. Check the scripture. I'm not reading something. You check the scripture for yourself. He said, don't call every man. I tell my children, that man is an uncle. That one is a brother. That person is a mister. Help your children to identify. Just like you help people in the church to identify spiritual rankings. 
There's something called, you know, eldership in the body of Christ. In fact, the church was built on eldership. The functional grace is secondary. People in the church or our own function in the position of leadership are elders. Within elders, you have you have various grace, including the ones that are mentioned in, in Romans chapter 12. The ministry of administration. That's a position of an elder. The ministry of a bishop, listen, is a position of an elder. A bishop, amen, who was known, in fact, interpreted as a as a presbyter, as a presbyter or a presbytery, all right, is a function of one who oversees. Oversees what? Oversees the position of administration within the context of the body of Christ. But our definition of a bishop today, amen, has, has been defined or hijacked by the definition and the uh, philosophy of of the Roman Catholic Church. So many of the things that we do within the context of the body of Christ, you know, talking about the charismatic Pentecostal, even some who call themselves apostolic today, amen, are extension of the Catholic belief system, the Anglican belief system, the Presbyterian belief system. But this system, amen, do not represent the, you know, the, 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 the idea of how church, how the ecclesia ought to function. It doesn't. So, eldership comes before, amen, our position of ministry gift. I am first an elder to the body of Christ before being seen as a prophet. And that's a huge responsibility. When you see yourself, when you're called into a position of an elder, you behave as an elder. So you don't project the, the office or the gift before the call, amen, to watch over the saints, to protect the saints. Jesus said to Peter, do you love, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Jesus said, that Peter said, yes. He asked him again, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Feed my lamb. Do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. The love of God is directly connected to the love of the saints. You cannot claim you love God while you are abusing the saints, while you are taking advantage of the people in the name of a position, or in the, excuse me, in the name of, of leadership, in the position of a father. Come on. We've got to, we're correcting things. Now you understand why Isaac cannot go pastor. Because we, we have to speak truth to power. We have to bring balance to the body of Christ. If I, if I have to be pastor in a church, then I'm not going to have the opportunity. In fact, I will not have the platform to be able to address this thing. So I'm standing, amen, in a neutral ground. And there's neutrality in the kingdom. On whose side are you? <laughs> Are you on their side or not? I'm not in anybody's side. I'm on the Lord's side. The side of the Lord is the side of the kingdom. And in the kingdom, that is what, it, what is called divine equilibrium. There has to be balance. The pendulum must swing, amen, on the right order. If, if you swing the pendulum to one extreme, it becomes error. There has to be balance. So when we look, when, when these elders that have been positioned at the gates who have eyes, who have sight, when they look at things, they can bring judgment. When there was problem in the church, the Bible says, amen, they brought, they brought the issue to the elders in Jerusalem. There was James, there was Peter, there was somebody else again. After, the, after everybody spoke, then James, who was the chief elder among them, rose up, according to Acts chapter 15, rose up and gave the val you know the, the validity amen of you know of of you know uh, and pass judgment amen on the validity of of the case and that was it no but after that no after james spoke nobody that's everything he said to <laughs> every other opinion because he's a is is an elder is is a man of wisdom at the gate do we understand this friends if we continue to build on this concept, it becomes very easy for us to track the heart and the mind of God as we step into this new day and how to interact within the new 
identity heaven is bringing to us as we grow in the things of the spirit we still need to maintain order respect honor and dignity and be able to track those who are using the ministry gift amen to abuse the sheep and the lamb of god we cannot do that do not call everyone that's the key word everyone on earth your father for you have one father who is in heaven you have one father who is in heaven what is jesus saying jesus is saying your position a spiritual agent, a spiritual entity is connected to one person. It, listen, listen, it even say, I, I, you know, I am the one. It says to the Father in heaven. Because Jesus was speaking from a position of Jesus. Remember at this point, he, he, he's not died yet. So the authority, amen, of, of his position of, you know, of, of a father. You know, remember it's God three in one. That position of his authority, amen, as Jesus Christ has not been fully perfected. Because remember, he left his glory. He left his position. He left his glory. Amen. He came as a man. So he was speaking from that position of Christ. A Christ, excuse me, of Jesus. Who was submitting, amen, to the instructions and to the direction, amen, of the Father. That was what Jesus was doing. So at this point, he was showing them a pattern. You only have one Father in heaven. Because he's the one, amen, who has given us all life. That's what Jesus is saying. He is the one that gave us life. He's the, we all carry his seed. He's the father of all spirits. We are, we are spirit. He's the father of all spirit. Is this saying that you should not submit to authority here? No, that's not what he's saying. But he's saying, don't position yourself. Don't give this position that belongs to the father, your father in heaven, to a man. But there will always be a point where he will bring people into our life to guard us, to guide us, to lead us, to teach us, to instruct us. And those people must be able to clearly define their place and their position in our life. That I may be playing the role of a father in your life, but I am not a father. I would dare not take the place and the position of God in your life. It's important that becomes clear. Men of God, people in leadership must say that to the people because that free the people, amen, from over attachment, from making them a demigod. This is something we've got to do deliberately if you want people to be free. And do not call, don't call them, don't give them the title, don't call them, don't give them the title of a father. You only have one father who is in heaven. Now, if you think, well, that is just the end. Then he went further again. It says in verse 10. So he's saying, he's saying the same thing in three different forms, in three different ways. All right. It's the issue of rabbi. It's the issue of father. The third one is an issue of an instructor. Listen to verse 10. Nor are you to be called. Nor are you to be called. Nor are you to be called. Now, before it's them, don't call them. Now it says, nor are you to be called, called instructors. For you have one instructor. Then he mentioned the word Christ. What is Christ? Christ is the grace, is the anointing that teaches us. Nor are you to be called instructors. But the question is, did they, did they not finally grow into instructors? Yes, they did. But at that point in time, because remember the key word, context. That point in time, they had not yet matured to be called, you know, instructors or tutors. Like Galatians will put it, Paul will put it in Galatians. Nor are you to be called instructors or tutors, for you have one instructor, and that's that is Christ. Context is very good when we when we interpreting the things of the Spirit, and we need it. So, having understood that, then how do we make sense of Second Kings?
How do we make sense of 2 Kings? Chapter 11 and chapter 12. As they were walking along together. As they were walking along together. I'm talking about Elijah and Elijah. As they were walking along together. Suddenly a chariot of fire with horses of fire. I mean that is attached to. When you talk about Elijah you always talk about chariot. You always talk about horses. You talk about fire. This guy has you know, a governmental military you know, leadership in a position attached to his prophetic grace. You see, when you track Elijah, you've got to understand the identity of Elijah as a prophetic representative of God's government on earth. It is fire. Amen. It is, it is chariots. Amen. You've got to understand this. So the Bible says, Amen. As they were walking together, but you see this concept of togetherness. Suddenly a chariot of fire with horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. Elijah went up into heaven in a wild wind. That's Elijah for you. You can describe this man in a wild wind. This guy is, you don't want to mess with him. As Elisha watched, he cried out, my father, my father. The chariot and the horsemen of Israel. As Elisha watch, you know, this chariot of fire with wild wind coming from heaven to finally, you know, take this man, this this entity, this vessel, this this one man government represents. I mean, no wonder. You know, the Bible says when he comes, when, when, you know, in the last day, God will, you know, God will, you know, re release or restore, amen, the spirit of Elijah, of, of Eli Elijah. And the spirit of Elijah was captured, amen, in the dimension, you know, dimension in John. John did not capture everything about Elijah. He captured a dimension. We are going to see, amen, in this new day, we, we're going to enter into the full reality, amen, of the spirit of Elijah. Amen. We see a dimension. We see an identity of Elijah. Amen. I mean, John never called down fire. So, in the ministry of John, we can't say that he, he operated in the full reality. Remember that when the Spirit of God begins to come to restore back the order of God. Amen. It comes in season. So, we have to make demand amen, or on the Spirit of Elijah, the fullness of that Spirit. We want the full reality. So, there's going to be a ministry of fire in our day. So the Bible says that as, as Elisha watched, he cried out, my father, my father. What is this saying? This is, this is very important. That calling, my father, my father, amen, makes demand, makes demand on the authority, on the grace, amen, on everything. Listen to this, on everything that Elijah has taught Elisha for 22 years, make a demand on it. Because the, the wildfire, the, the fire was separating them. So the only way Elijah, Elijah, excuse me, Elijah could, could connect, because I mean, this thing will happen in seconds. You can't even see it. I mean, the Bible says that this thing separate them. So he had to call out Karabashianda. He had to call out his position and connection with Elijah. My father, my father, I have listened to you. I have walked with you. I have connected with you. You cannot leave me without that to which I have asked for. The Bible says, as he did that, Elisha picked up the cloak. Some call it a mantle. The cloak that had fallen from Elijah and went back and stood on the back of Jordan. My father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. One man carried the entire government of a nation upon his shoulder. One man. This is powerful. So if we, if we are tracking what the Spirit of the Lord is demanding in our day, we need to understand this concept. I think I'm going to be stopping here. Let's, let's see. Yeah. Maybe we continue tomorrow on this concept. We'll pick it up from here. My father, my father. Hallelujah. My father, my father, the chariots of Israel. A 
and the horsemen. Elisha was not the only person that made this declaration. We're going to look at that tomorrow. But I believe that we have really expanded on some things this morning that has given us insight, clarity, and, and understanding regarding or at the, 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 the intentions of the Father, the demand of the Father for our day. And uh, I believe that as we continue to To track this emphasis of the spirit for this new day. That we will be better prepared. Excuse me. Than even the days of John. Because uh, there are things the father will have us confront in our day. We are no longer going to live in caves and, and in holes. But we cannot go further with what we know or what we have received all right, from our second day experience of God. Like I said, we're coming out of Adullam as, you know, representative of John. <coughs> Excuse me. We're coming out of Adullam. We're coming to a position, a place where we are going to engage you know the moment John came out of the wilderness which was a type of his own Adullam you see in Adullam there are ministries there Don't, so let's not mistake you know the idea of an Adullam in Adullam there are powerful ministry there are capacity and grace like I said it's a place where we get instructed where we get furnished we get built we develop relationship we develop the spirit of unity and togetherness and oneness in Adulam. If, if you have not experienced Adulam, please, I beg you, you need to go back and experience Adulam. Because the things of God, amen, are done in sequence. Line upon line. Pr principle upon, excuse me, principle upon principles, amen. A little here, a little there. Precept upon precept. You've got to build on that. Don't jump. You can't jump the things of God. Don't, 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 don't try to shunt the things of God. You can't jump from class one to class four when it comes to the things of no, 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 no. You must go through class two, class three. All right. We've been prepped. Heaven is prepping us and preparing us. Our position of being prepped is to prepare us for the next reality. So as we understand this, it it positions us. David fought bears and lions. And that had built some certain capacity in him. So that in the day his father says, listen, it was his father that says, go and present this thing to your brothers. So there was a release, amen, of the grace of the spirit of a father. When your father releases you into the lion's den, you've got to understand that it's not to kill you. It's to bring something out of you. Oh, hallelujah. It's to bring something out of you. Something he knows that you're ready for. Amen. So take the bread and the cheese to your brother at the war front. Like I said, only, only a blind father, only a cruel father will send his son amen, to the war front. I said that father knows something. That his son doesn't know, and every other person doesn't know. So, in this is a day where the father is sending us out, and like I've, I've shared on this, I said, occasion is preparing the ground for us. <clears throat> occasion is preparing the ground for us to go to the war front, to go to the battlefront. And so, we have to be ready, we've got to be prepared. All right. And we will go the way we are. There was nothing physical that had trained David. I mean, we we're not even told that his father sent him with some guard, somebody to watch him up, you know. It was just sent. But like I said, that was prophetic. God arranged that. That was providence preparing the ground for David. And David, hallelujah, had been prepared. 
It needed a new identity and we've spoken about that new identity. Because when he finally left Saul, something about David changed to the point that Saul could not identify who this guy is. Who, what kind of a boy is who? Abner, who is that young man? Oh, King Lee forever. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just like the way Abner replied, you know, I saw I don't know. How can you not know Abner? Ah, there are certain dimensions of us coming out in this day that men will not be able to identify. That religion will never be able to identify, that the most powerful military guys will not be able to identify, we will step into realms, into dimensions, into you know positions in the spirit that people will be wondering how heaven will be giving us capacity insight technology you know to do certain things and they'll be wondering but yes it's a new day in a new day there's a release of a new authority of a new anointing the anointing is a tool amen to express the wisdom of god the anointing is a tool to express the wisdom of god in dealing with complex situation so when you're separated by the anointing of a new day i thought i'm i thought i'm finishing lord <laughs> i thought i'm rounding up all right the anointing is to prepare us for a new day so we get anointed david was anointed three times we're tracking David. But beyond, you know, David just been anointed and knew that David was seen with capacity and competence um, that is expressed at, at least in four categories of, a, or, you know, of expression. He was a shepherd. He was a harp player. He was a warrior. He was a prophet. A king. In fact, he, he stepped in the ministry of a priest. One man is <laughs> David Christ. Is a type. Is a typology of Christ. One man, a shepherd, a warrior, and harpist, a psalmist, all right, a king, a prophet. One man. One man. You see, he was growing in that grace was growing he was growing in that grace there was a day that he needed to express a different face a different order a different life a different authority within the within within the arsenals of heaven to face this goliath of a spirit that have defied the armies of a living god he was prepared for it so as i round up I'll round up here, then tomorrow we'll pick up from um, Second Kings, my father, my father. I'm going to track that because it's important we track this thing about fatherhood. I want to believe that a lot of us today somehow have received clarity. You may challenge some of the things that I've said, that's fine. But challenge it, amen, on the basis of truth, on the basis of the word of God. God is bringing men into our life. Even David, I mean, had a father in his life, a spiritual father. It was Samuel. Samuel was the one that prepared David, the grace, the anointing of Samuel. So it wasn't just the oil. We saw David, amen, at, at a point, living with Samuel, you know, being, de being developed, being trained by Samuel. So we've got to understand all this thing. What we are looking at we must not abuse the position of fatherhood. We must not abuse it. And we must not abuse fathers. So let, let me balance it. But tomorrow we'll deal with this. All right? Because it's, it's easy for us to talk about amen, fathers abusing the sons. Sons too can abuse their fathers. All right? I mean, I, I, because I've, I've been a pastor. You see, the reason why I can also share those things is because this is not just theory and revelation to me. I've also faced the practical, practical aspect because I've I've shepherded people, I've pastored people, not for 10 years, for almost 20 years. So I know people, 
and I know how church people behave. Right? I've seen it all. So, so God has given me, you know, all this experience and wisdom that when we speak, we speak from this well of experience. Because, I mean, I've been in a situation where I was literally being abused right, by certain folks in, in, in our church back then. And and I'll, maybe as the Lord leads us, I will show us how, I mean, you know, congregation can abuse, you know, followers can abuse their, you know, their shepherd. Particularly when the shepherd is like, is trying to, you know, this always happens when the shepherd is trying to live to the standard of God's word. That's where the abuse come. When you see a shepherd trying to live in accordance to the standard, the principle of God's word, get ready to be abused. Because people will take that as a weakness. They will take that as an opportunity to, to walk on you, to, you know, to, to, to shut down on you, to shut down on you and to try to, you know, limit you. And that's why you see men of God, all right? They, they, they try to lord it over their people. But you see, two wrongs can make a right. Two extremes can make a right. I've got to bring balance. Father, we thank you. What a word, what a position, what a, what a release, what, what a declaration. Thank you, Father, for this. I could feel that which has been pulled out of me. It's like somebody <laughs> literally pulled pulling something out of me. Jesus said, virtue have left me. I, I feel virtue really leaving me today. But I know, God, this is good. Because somebody needed to hear this. Somebody needed to hear what we've talked about. Yes, it's this is warfare because this brings liberation to people, brings knowledge, brings wisdom. And I just thank you. I just thank you, Father, for refreshing into my life i thank you lord that you renew my strength oh god i thank you lord for yes it's like the lord is saying you you touch things that the enemy doesn't want the church to know you've touched things that the enemy and that's why i feel a bit you know weak you know in my body i feel a bit weak now but, but i understand this i understand this and we thank god for the ability to deal with these things you see these are things that Jezebel doesn't want us to touch. These are, you know, truth the enemy doesn't really want us to touch. These are things Atalia wants to kill. But we'll continue to deal with this thing, Father. And we thank you, Lord, for grace and, and refreshing. These are days, seasons of refresh, refreshment, oh God. We've been refreshed, oh God. Holy Spirit, I thank you. I come under your leadership and authority. Everything that I've proclaimed, I declare this day. I come under the spiritual authority, oh God. I come under your headship as I submit myself, yes, to the authority of your church, of your body, oh God. As I submit to submit myself, yes, to the guidance and to the leading of those, oh God, that you have placed ahead of me, placed above me, oh God. Both physical, both natural, oh God, and spiritual. I thank you, oh God, Father, that I will continue. I will never walk outside of outside your authority. I will never walk, oh God, in subordination. I yield myself to your authority. And from this position, I can speak, oh God, with life, with power and authority. I thank you, Lord, this morning for everyone that I've joined to listen, oh God, to appreciate this grace and this gift. Oh God, may you bless them. May you continue to increase them. May you continue to nourish and flourish their heart, their life, oh God, with truth, oh God. May this truth never get into our head to make us feel well, we're better than others. We're more, we know. They, 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 they are still in darkness. We are in the light. No, Father. We are not on these extremes. We are on your side. We are on the side of the Lord of hosts. Do that which you desire. Do that which you have planned. Do that which you have prepared, O oh God, for us. We surrender to this, O oh God. We yield ourselves. We thank you, Lord, for churches this morning that will be gathering. We will ask, O oh God, for your grace and your blessing and your truth, O oh God. Let the word, O oh God, bring forth life. Let pulpits this morning split, O oh God, that have been built on the order of Jeroboam. Let those pulpits begin to split, O oh God. And those, O oh God, that have experienced splitting, O oh God, that are not supposed to have split. Father, we pray, we pray, bring them back, unite them, restore them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God. May wisdom build your house. 
May wisdom build your house. May your people be ready. May we not be afraid. May we not run into hiding. May we not, oh God, be captured by the spirit of the bond woman. May we proclaim and declare that we are of, yes, Sarah, oh God, our mother from above. We thank you this day, oh God, that we will continue to build from that order, oh God, of the new Jerusalem. It's new because it's ever new in you, oh God. Not new because it's new. It's new because it's in you. We thank you, Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Spirit of God. Yes, that, that, that city is an ancient one, but it's new because it's in you. Whatever comes out of you comes out of newness. So we thank you this morning that you will continue to help us as we leave, as we move out of Babylon, as we look at our life and examine the things that we're doing, making sure that they are not reflecting the identity of Babel. We thank you, Spirit of God. We honor you. We, we bless you this morning that you'll continue to bless us and we'll continue to be a blessing to the nation, that I'll continue to be a blessing to the body. I thank you, Lord, for those people that you have raised to to pray for me and to stand in the gap for me, Lord, to continue to do this job. Father, thank you. I appreciate you for their lives, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much, everyone, this morning for being part of uh, uh, this uh, uh, broadcast. I want to thank you, Brother uh, uh, Joshua. You are the first person to connect this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, uh, Prophet uh, Linton Waltham. Well, thank you. My brother uh, from Botswana, Bo Boikoso. I hope I got it right, boy. Possible, all right. Thank you so much. I appreciate, I appreciate your connection. Oh, Sister Bumi, amen. Thank you so much. Wow, you've made my day. Thank you. Thank you for connecting. Hey, my brother Ricardo. Thank you so much, my brother, for connecting with me this morning. Really appreciate you. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna read all your uh, uh, your uh, 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 your comments later. All right, and I reply them. Uh, thank you so much, my brother Ka uh, uh, Kane Day, amen. All the way from United States, thank you, sir. We bless the Lord for your life, for his grace upon you, amen. And that which you represent in the kingdom, thank you, amen. Uh, my brother uh, uh, Gregory, thank you so much, too, amen, for connecting this morning. It's been a while. I hope you're doing well. I've not uh, uh, seen you on Facebook for a while now. I hope you're doing well. God bless you. May the, may the Lord continue to prosper you and establish his, his grace and his will in your life amen uh, sister tina wow thank you so much uh, i was just thinking about you this morning uh, i've not really seen you uh, for i think few days now online if i'm not mistaken yes but you were on my mind this morning thank you so much for connecting this morning god bless you bless you bless you bless you amen uh brother desmond thank you thank you once again for connecting you also you've been scarce for a while but it's nice to have you connect this morning. I can understand, amen, if we are not online or we cannot communicate. I, I do understand. We all deal with all kinds of things and with the issue of data also. But, but thank God. Thank you for connecting this morning, Brother Desmond. Appreciate it. Amen. Man of God, amen. Pastor Raki, nice to have you always. It's always an honor to have you connect with me this morning. I thank you. Thank you, man of God. May your day be filled with blessing and goodness. Amen, sir. All right. I think, uh, yes, I have um, wished everybody a blessing, blessed day. Thank you, everyone, for connecting with me this morning. I appreciate you. And those that are watching or listening on the radio, I uh, appreciate everybody. All right. We're still trying to get this issue of uh, recording, you know, right on the... Please, uh, uh, let me just drop this a uh, prayer request with everybody there i need a new laptop in fact what i'm believing god for is a mac so that i can really do this job that i need to do you know properly i've got this laptop that is 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 as old as methuselah <laughs> so please pray along with me i need a new laptop amen to be able to do this job i don't have the resource to, to get one but please pray along with me and uh, yes, that the Lord will provide for me. Please just put that in your personal prayer. I need it. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a blessed, wonderful day. May the Father continue to cause his face to shine upon us. May he give us rest. May he give us grace to come out of our holes. Come out of our, whatever the Adulam represents. May you come out of it. That's if you have been there for a while. But if you've not been there, well, stay there. <laughs> Amen. You're still relevant in the kingdom. I love every one of you. Thank you this morning. Have a blessed, wonderful Sunday. Bye-bye.